Good morning. This is Kello Land on the go with all you need to know in news and weather as you start your day. A Rapid City man is behind bars this morning, charged in connection in the death of a Rapid City woman. The Pennington County Sheriff's Office says deputies were called to a home in Rapid Valley just before 6 o'clock Tuesday morning. 54-year-old Julie Fisk was found dead inside. Authorities also found evidence of arson. The suspect, 64-year-old Brent Kurtzman, was found at another home. Kurtzman is charged with first-degree murder and first-degree arson. Watertown police are reminding businesses to check money received from customers after responding to multiple reports of counterfeit money this year. Authorities say the bills are $100 bills marked with movie prop use only, copy or motion pictures purposes. Two arrests for passing the fake bills have been made. The charges are forgery and theft. There are other investigations into the bills. A Monroe, South Dakota man is accused of beating dogs with a bat and possibly poisoning them. Two different women claim 41-year-old Philip Geyer assaulted their dogs in December. At least one incident was caught on surveillance camera. One of the women told investigators her dog's leg was injured and the bat left a hole in her front door. Court documents say her other dog died shortly after the alleged attack. Investigators are testing a water bowl with an unknown green substance to determine whether it's poison. Geyer faces two misdemeanor charges. You can take a closer look at the allegations in a Kelloland.com original report by Jacob Newton. A street race on Sunday left one vehicle in flames and two drivers with minor injuries. Police say the Honda that started on fire was headed east on Russell when the driver ran a red light. They crashed into a car that had a green arrow and was turning left onto Prairie Avenue. The Honda then burst into flames. That witness estimated speeds around 80 miles an hour. I don't know if we know that's exactly how fast. Um, sometimes those witness estimates aren't always the best, but obviously it was enough to, uh, I guess, show that they were going at a high rate of speed. The Honda driver received a citation for reckless driving and racing. The other racer did not cause any physical damage, but left the scene before police arrived. Now let's get a check on our weather with meteorologist Brian Karstens. Good morning, Brian. All right. Good morning, Lauren. Good morning, everybody. Weather continues to be very mild. That is the big weather story. And as we look at the headlines, 58 was our high yesterday in Sioux Falls. Wow. Not quite record levels, but really, really warm. That was the mild, mildest day since December 7th. Can we uh, make things better than that? Well, it looks like it by early next week. Yep, those predictions of early spring-like weather continue, at least for now. And we'll see what the extended forecast holds. High today, 57 Sioux Falls today, 55 in Aberdeen, 51 Pier, 55 Rapid City. Complete look at the forecast coming up here shortly in just a couple minutes. Thank you, Brian. The family of Garrett Hawk says he was shot and killed in Fort Thompson last July 1st. One person we interviewed about him was Diamond Sazu, a 12-year-old Fort Thompson girl who told us about missing him and the memories that are now that not, not. I was like, it's okay, Diamond. Remember, you have those memories with Garrett that you forever cherish. Although unable to share any specific details, an FBI spokesperson tells Kelloland News there is an active ongoing investigation. Well, the Crow Creek Sioux Tribe has been making an effort to address public safety needs on the reservation in recent months. One issue the chairman, Peter Lankeek, was noticing had to do with gun violence. He says they were seeing weapon brandishing, gunplay, and death on the reservation. So they started a gun buyback program. They've hosted two events so far, one in August and another in November. We were able to take uh, up to 60 handguns off the streets here. Uh, about a half a dozen sawed-off shotguns and uh, uh, roughly a half a dozen assault-style rifles that were turned in. Lenkeek says the tribe gave $500 to anyone who brought in a gun, no questions asked. The guns were then destroyed and recycled. They hope to host another buyback event in the coming weeks. South Dakota troops are once again being deployed to the southern border. Governor Kristi Noem announced Tuesday that she'll send National Guard troops to help build a wall at the Texas border with Mexico. 60 National Guard soldiers will deploy to the southern border on a rolling basis over a three-month period. This is the fifth time Nome has deployed troops to the southern border to assist in border security efforts. 
Let's look at some of our top stories. Now let's get one last look at your weather with meteorologist Brian Karstens. Brian? All right, our weather update today. Watching those clouds streaming in across western and southwestern South Dakota. And that will be the, the story today, probably the one limiting factor on some of the potential for highs today. But even having said that, most of these clouds are high and mid-level clouds. And uh, pretty moisture starved in the low levels. Let's look at future cast today and it does play out the scenario here as we look at uh, the readings bouncing out of the 20s and 30s this morning. Here we are. We'll settle out here by mid afternoon. A lot of 50 degree weather uh, here on. You'll be warmer than yesterday, but it's still probably just close to 50 there. Uh, mid 50s in Rapid City, Aberdeen. Uh, we're officially calling for about 55 today. Might be surprisingly mild out in Mobridge. Could we hit 60? Yeah, there's a chance. It's definitely sunnier there. And then these clouds along the Nebraska border that will maybe keep Yankton in check just a little bit. I know we hit low 60s there yesterday. May not quite reach that today. A uh, sprinkle or two. Can't roll that out south of Interstate 90 as we wrap up the afternoon into the evening. Then we get to watch a, a cold front that filters through during the overnight. That'll pick up our wind tomorrow out of the northwest. I do expect most of the day will become mostly sunny, but the wind will be common there from Minnesota all the way to the Black Hills. In fact, Black Hills, probably Rapid City tomorrow, 20 to 35. So it'll feel cooler as a result of that, even though the actual highs, really nobody can argue with that. That's still very mild for this time of the year. By Friday, we'll probably pull back even just a little bit more. See the difference? There's tomorrow. So you got your 40s north of Interstate 90 and into Minnesota. And then watch on Friday. We bring in just a brief cool down. We kind of sandwich those 20s and 30s from Duluth to Minneapolis. Sioux Falls, mid 40s. We're still in the 50s, though, in parts of western South Dakota. And then we turn it around into the weekend and look at how this goes by Monday of next week. Now we've got 60s and 70s widespread. Just think of all the things you could do outside if you have the day off or can somehow manage to do that. Well, I'll give you that challenge. Oh, and remember too, next Tuesday, the day after, oh, things can change in a hurry in late February and early March. And that's already being strongly hinted at with a huge uh, spread on temperatures. So we'll see the fallout from that. If we end up with some rain or snow chances, there'll be much more to say on that in the days ahead. 57 today is Sioux Falls, 53 in Mitchell, 55 in Rapid City. Our seven-day forecast into the 50s for the weekend looks great. If you love outdoors weather and just like an early taste of spring, 64 by Monday. Aberdeen, you're right in the thick of it too here with mid to upper 50s and close to 60 degree weather by Monday. There is that chance of some moisture there by day seven. We're kind of keeping that fairly contained right now, uh, but there's still room for those things to kind of move around. So that's day seven. Pierre, same idea. 50 degree weather leading into the 60s by Sunday and Monday and Rapid City. You also will be well above normal. 60 degree weather is likely early next week. More details online at kettleland.com.